So I'm going to go ahead and just open up with a word of prayer real quick, and then we'll jump in. So, Lord, we just thank you. We thank you for who you are. Lord, I just pray, God, that even as we dive into a topic that may feel painful, that may feel hard, Lord, we just ask for your joy. Lord, I just ask, Lord, that your joy would just be released, Lord, um, that you would help us to, to cover the points, Lord, that you want us to cover. And, Lord, that you would bring to mind everything that you want to bring to mind. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. We acknowledge and we honor you as part of the Trinity, and we just welcome you. We welcome your presence and all that you have, the power, the comfort. We welcome you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, so we're going to be talking a little bit about grief. Yes. Grief and mourning. I know this is not a, uh, a happy topic. However, um, I felt it was a topic that God really wanted us to talk about. And I, I felt in my heart that not only did he want us to talk about this, but the person that helps us with our grief and our mourning is Holy Spirit. And when we experience grief and mourning apart from Holy Spirit... It is really challenging. It is really difficult. And in, and a lot of people, when they experience grief and mourning without Holy Spirit, a lot of times they just want to end it themselves because they want the pain to stop because these waves come and it sucks when the waves come. And all you can do is hopefully not get pushed over by them or beat up by them. But you kind of feel like that little kid, you know, the one that doesn't listen to their parent and then goes out to the ocean and then like, like oh, it's fine. All of a sudden, and you're like, hey. <laughs> Yes, that's how grief feels sometimes. You just get sucked up by it. And you're like that little kid, and you're like, I should have listened to my mama, right? I should have done it. And so that's how it could feel. And so the way that we get through that and the way we navigate that is with Holy Spirit. And so tonight's talk, today is going to be more about not just the grief and loss, but how do we welcome Holy Spirit into that? Or how have Holy Spirit helped us, all of us up here, in our grief? So we don't have, it's not like we have a cookie cutter approach to it. There are not, there isn't, and that's just the thing, if you know anything about grief, there is no cookie cutter approach to it. However, we all have different personalities. And so we're just going to share a little bit about our journeys and um, how God has shown up for us. Um, all right. So when you may be asking, okay, so what, what, what is grief or what is mourning? We're going to talk a little bit about both of those things, but um, I'm just going to read this to you. So it says, in life, we will face hardships. We will face loss. So what does loss look like? Um, because obviously with grief and mourning is, is when you experience a loss. A lot of times we may think a loss is only like someone passing away, but that's not true. So the loss could be the loss of a loved one to death. It could be the loss of a relationship, divorce, a move, conflict, the loss of future, right? Thinking things should have been, could have been, would have been X, Y, and Z. Um, failed jobs or careers, businesses, um, change of job, um, or even a career path. Maybe you're headed down one way and all of a sudden you're like, well, that's not going to work out. There is grieving and mourning that needs to take place. If not, you get sucked up in that wave. All of a sudden you don't know why or you don't know what or you don't even know what's happening. There's anger. There's hurt. There's all kinds of stuff that can come with that. So when we experience loss, we also experience both grief and mourning. So Pastor Elsa, if you can read that. So this is just a little blurb about um, in, in the secular version of what is grief and what is loss. Mm -hmm. uh, grief relates to the thoughts and feelings that accompany a loss from sadness to anger to longing to be with a person. On the other hand, mourning is how feelings of grief are shown to the public. They are acts or behaviors that show the sadness or hurt that someone is experiencing after losing someone they love. Grief and mourning represent different but complementary parts of the healing process. Both grief and mourning can be intense and painful shortly following a loss, but can decrease over time as healing and acceptance develop. And so one of the things that I've noticed in working with a lot of people dealing with grief and loss um, is that if you are if you don't, there's a part of where we have to accept 
what we're feeling. <laughs> we have to admit <laughs> what we're feeling. Um, and if we just suppress what the, the loss, then it could become an open door for the enemy to torment and, tor and torture us. Because what we're doing is we're den we think we're keeping the pain at bay, but the reality is is you're creating a hurt pocket for the devil to rule and reign. Because if God isn't invited into that space, in your own pride, unfortunately, you're Lord of it. That can feel like a chunkla. Maybe I should stop there. John, what do you think? <laughs> Well, in my experience, um, I've had a lot of chanclas, uh, and I've been sucked into a lot of things. <laughs> um, it, it is true. Um, if we do not um, handle it and we do not make room for God, um, it could go really bad really quick. Um, I think about um, when I lost my grandfather, um, I think it was a Wednesday or Thursday, and then the following day, I lose my, my brother. And so in 48 hours, I lose two family members. And it literally was one of the darkest moments in my own personal life. Um, and I laugh at it now because I, we, I was like in the hospital, like a novella, you know what I mean? It's just like, <laughs> is my grandfather gonna live or not? And there I was, and then I get the news, I get a phone call and they're like, hey, your brother just got shot and killed. And there I am falling falling apart in the whatever you call that the hallway there you go and my brother I used to remember him holding me and he's just saying the devil's a liar the devil's a liar and it was the hardest thing for me to face because in that moment I was just like God where are you like why why is this happening and why is it happening so fast and I remember for me it was like three months of just ugliness for me personally because I didn't have freedom I didn't know how to process and I did not know that hey you know what in the most darkest moments like this I shouldn't withdraw from God but I need to draw to God and give him space and allow him to heal those things in my life so that I wouldn't live three months of just complete chaos and because there are times where I know sometimes like in the moment of, of after losing or experience loss, a lot of times we may say like, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm okay, I'll get through it, which is fine. I mean, I'm not saying jump into therapy like as soon as it happens. However, when those waves come, it can be very overwhelming. And, and that's where, you know, it may be important to like, you know, reach out to somebody, whether it's just for prayer on the prayer team or maybe your, where, your, your lead of where you're serving or... Maybe it's a friend, right? Or, or it is making that phone call, phone call um, for therapy, right? Because in those moments, all of a sudden, you just, you just feel so alone. You just feel so, so alone. Um, and so it's, we invite God into those spaces when we invite people into those spaces. Because there's this, this beautiful thing that happens with with receiving God's healing from here, but then also receiving God's healing from here. Um, I'm hoping, so what do, you, what, do you, what do you think else? Go ahead. Yeah, so, so as you're sharing, it just reminds me of when my mom, um, I was here in Fresno, my mom, I grew up in Washington, so all my family's in Washington, and we are in the middle of moving, um, of packing up our stuff because um, we're getting ready to move into our new home, um, or we're packing up our stuff. And, um, and I remember getting a phone call and my sister is screaming on the other, on the other line. And she's saying that mom had a stroke and she's not waking up and the paramedics are there do, performing CPR. And when she said that, and she's screaming, she's n not waking up. My whole body just went numb. <clears throat> and John looks at me and I'm just looking at him and I'm and it, the first thing that came to my mind was like no what like it, it just my whole body just felt numb and my sister kept talking to me and all I heard was just you know Charlie Brown after that I just could not even hear her anymore and I just I literally sit down against the wall I just kind of just go down and I'm just listening but I'm kind of I'm in shock and I couldn't think of anything. And I told my sister, I'll call you back. 
I, I didn't know what to tell her. And the first thing that, like you're saying, like, you, you know, God, where are you? And the first person that came to mind was Pastor Mandy. And I messaged her right away. And I told her what was happening. And I was about to go crazy. And my husband is there just looking at me. And Pastor Mandy said, the first thing she said is, ask Jesus where he's at. Ask Jesus where he is. And, th and that's the first thing I said is, Jesus, where are you? And he told me, I'm right here. And, and so ne reaching out to another person, had I not done that, I feel like I, I think I would have just started going crazy in front of my family, my kids. And, and I remember the next question she said is, ask Jesus, where, where's my mom? And at that moment, when I asked Jesus, where's my mom? He said, she's right here. She's still here. Um, now, the outcome wasn't what we wanted it to be, but in that moment, God, Holy Spirit, was literally comforting me in that moment, telling me, I'm right here. Your mom's still here. And so that helped me to keep my stuff together in that moment and, and gave me just enough to call my sister back and to just watch on FaceTime as they're performing CPR on my mom. And all I could do was just pray and pray and pray and try to keep it together because everybody else that was over there was falling apart. And it was literally just trying to walk my sister through, okay, you need to stop screaming. You need to let the paramedics do what they need to do. It, it's going to be okay. I'm two states away. I can't be there. And I'm just there watching this happening to my mom. And I can't do anything about it. So, yes. Had, had I not, my husband not been there, had I not thought of, right, reaching out to Pastor Mandy right away, I probably would have lost it. So. Pastor Mike, what do you, so I, I, I know you probably experienced loss too, but I've also think about, you know, sometimes not only do we experience loss directly, but we are the person on the other line when someone does call. Or we are the, per, like, you know, we have, we're, we're helping a friend through it or we're helping, you know, as pastors, we're helping, you know, a, someone from our congregation through it. Um, what do you want, you can share about your personally or share about you walking someone through that. Yeah, I'll do a little bit of both. Um, for me personally, the reason why I really liked your example of here and here is because I find that when I have, when I'm kind of there, like life has just happened, you know, something's going crazy. I have a really hard time hearing the voice of God through whatever I'm going through. So I would love to say that I'd be able to do what Elsa did, um, but track record shows that I'm not able to do that. <laughs> <laughs> but when I bring somebody alongside, say, I, hey, like this is what's happening, they can kind of help me filter through what I'm hearing through what my emotions and what I'm feeling. Um, so that's just a little bit about me. One of the... It's an honor to be able to do funerals for people. Um, I know that sounds like you're like, well, it's an honor. But I, I, but as a pastor. Um, I think Pastor Mike has done the most funerals out of all of us pastors, just FYI. <laughs> I, yeah. You, you don't have to call him, but <laughs> that's saying. <laughs> yeah. Quinceañeras right here. Quinceañeras. John does quinceañeras. Does, you want to do the party? party. I'm put the guy. Party. Do you want to cry, Pastor Mike? Well. <laughs> They just know I can't say that word. That's why. We would call you, but you keep saying quinceañera, right? Um, and so when people are grieving, oftentimes we are the person on the other end of the phone. And, and, and I try to act as though I am this for them. Because oftentimes I don't have an answer. I don't have uh, um, the words that they need. I, I just don't have anything. I'm just another person. Um, so my job, I believe, is to try to do my best to connect them to the source. Uh, so kind of like what Pastor Mandy was doing for Elsa when she was going through her time. Um, and so people, it, it is very difficult when people, are, when, when people go through loss. And it's even harder when you don't have Christ. Um, and so that was, the, that was me through the majority of my life, dealing with loss and grief and mourning, and, but not having hope. And so when we have hope, um, it, it makes that process a little bit easier. 
Um, in the long run, and you guys can attest to this, in the long run, it makes it a lot easier. <laughs> but when it's right in front of you, it makes it just a little bit easier. Um, but, you know, if, if you are in a position where maybe you're the phone that people call when things are happening, uh, my suggestion to you would be do your very best to connect them to Christ and to the Holy Spirit. Yeah, for sure. So Dr. Tony Evans, he explains the Holy Spirit um, in his book, The Names of the Holy Spirit. It's a, actually a really good book. Deshaun just bought it because he was doing a sermon series, or he was preaching on... Holy Spirit, and I was like, oh, I was like, I want to watch a series with you, you know, he thought it was a sermon series, but it's not the sermon series, anyways, so I have this book, right, and so I'm like, what is this book, it's on the coffee table, and I pick it up one day, and I start reading it, and I'm like, when I started reading it, I felt Jesus was like, yeah, that's what you guys are talking about for your panel, and I'm like, but that's not funny, like, the whole point of the panel is to be funny, right, and he's like, the whole point of the panel is to tell people about Holy Spirit, and I was like, you got it, you got me, Jesus, right, um, but he explains the Holy Spirit so well, and I think this is so needed to see this aspect of Holy Spirit. So John's going to read um, this little excerpt, and then also Mike will read after him. So this one is, You're Not Alone. So go ahead. You're Not Alone. It says, the helper Jesus introduces us to in this passage in the book of John is close enough to truly help when you need help the most. As we saw earlier in John 14, 17, Jesus said, you know him because he abides with you and will be in you. The Holy Spirit is close enough to be with you in an experiential way. In exper I mean, how do you say that word? Experiential. Exper <laughs> experiential way. Thank you, you Pastor Jeremiah. I didn't use that in a wedding. And it says, um, <laughs> he is by your side like a partner or a companion not only that but he is also in you this means the holy spirit walks alongside you while at the same time he makes his home inside you and while you may feel alone at times in your life this reality of the holy spirit's closeness to you both near and within means you you're never truly alone Satan would like for you to forget that he would like you to feel isolated and without help and when you feel that way, it's easy to give up and to lose hope. But when you remember the closeness of the helper God has given you, you'll know you can get through anything life sends your way. Without a doubt, you are not alone. As a Christian, you have never been alone. For the moment you trusted in Jesus Christ for salvation from your sins, you received the companionship of the Holy Spirit both externally and internally. The reason he remains present in both location is that depending on the situation, you can need help in both areas of your life and at the same time. Whether you're facing something in your external circumstances or struggling with internal thoughts or emotions, the Holy Spirit has positioned himself to be available to you when and where you need him the most. So good. Now, Pastor Mike's going to read the other one. This is the helper as comforter and advocate. The helper and the comfort and advocate. Earlier, I mentioned a couple of forms of spiritual help the Holy Spirit offers us. Again, both names coming from the flex term parakletos, advocate and comforter. Let's talk about those. The specific helping role I found myself needing from the Holy Spirit the most after losing my wife was that of comforter. Not only did I feel alone in those early morning hours, sleepless nights, and evenings when the hands of the clock seemed to move so slow. But I needed comfort because of the pain I felt in my grief. I'm sure you've been in a situation where you needed this comfort as well. Most of us have a, co a cover we all call a comforter on our beds, or at least close enough so it's available when we need it. A comforter is usually soft, somewhat weighted, and big enough to wrap ourselves in it completely, and it comes in handy, particularly on a cold night or during a cold day. Comforters aren't used just when it's cold, though. I found myself using mine a lot after Lois's passing because I no longer had the physical warmth of her presence. I'd come to know as second nature for nearly five decades. I needed a comforter every night in those first months, even if it wasn't cold. The Holy Spirit as comforter has come to give us the presence of God now that the presence of Jesus is no longer on earth. 
Whether we're going through a cold spell emotionally or spiritually, or even physically, the Comforter is close enough to reach out and wrap his presence around our hearts and souls in order to let us know we're not alone. Because Jesus has risen on the third day, excuse me, because Jesus has risen to the third heaven and no longer walks with us in the physical form on earth, the Holy Spirit has been assigned as comforter for our times of loneliness and need. Another name that can come from Parakletos is advocate. An advocate is someone who pleads your case, similar to what a defense lawyer does in a courtroom. When the Holy Spirit shows up as a the advocate in your life. He comes with the ability to defend when accusations are made against you. He's there as an advocate for you when situations or circumstances stirred up by Satan are aimed at destroying you. Legal advocates will always enter a legal system to intervene on behalf of the ones they're representing. And the Holy Spirit is no different. As the advocate, he intervenes for us when we need him to do, to do just that. So he just, I, I love the way Tony Evans is Dr. Tony Evans. He's phenomenal. And if you don't know part of his story, just last year he lost his wife. They were married over 50 years. And, um, and so in this season that he's in, he wrote this book. Um, and it was, I was just reminded of the power and the presence of God and reminded of the, the importance of Holy Spirit in our life. And, um, and I was thinking about this, and as Pastor shared a couple Wednesdays ago for our first Wednesday service, he talked about the power of the Holy Spirit, right? And he talked about the room, right, the room that they were all gathered in, the upper room. And he talked about, you know, tongues of fire coming in. And, man, I was trying my hardest not to lose it. I was sitting next to Cass. And if you were sitting behind me, I'm sorry. But I was, like, dying laughing. And, like, you know, your shoulders kind of, and I was like, hold it together. Casper, pastors, you're not supposed to be doing this. But when he was talking about tongues of fire, I promise you, all I saw was the cow tongue, like lengua, and the, like literally in my, in my head. That's all I saw. So then when he got silly and he said that, I was like, okay, we were all on the same page the whole time because that is all I was thinking in my head. It was the funniest thing ever. And I was trying not to tell Cass, and I did tell her, and then we were both trying to hold it together and be good pastors. Um, but what's crazy is that this is something I hadn't noticed before and something that I felt God, it was important to mention today is that Holy Spirit came and filled up that room. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit, tongues of fire. They were mourning and grieving for 120 days. In their mourning, in their grieving, Jesus who walked with them, who talked with them, who loved them. They sat at his feet and listened to him. You could say it was like their best friend was literally murdered. Murdered. You have 120 people who've just lost someone that they deeply loved and cared for. And at that moment, they did not understand God you said he was a redeemer. You said he was Messiah. You said he was coming to save us. And in that moment, in their flesh, they thought he was going to overrule the Roman government. They didn't think it was a, the spiritual part of it. They thought he was literally in human form and he was going to take over. And it didn't happen like that. So you want to talk about loss? You want to talk about mourning and grieving? You're sitting together with 120 of your closest friends, reminiscing about, do you remember when he did this? Do you remember when he did that? What about the time he said that one story? And I'm sure in the midst of their sharing stories, there was tears, there was hurt, it was hard to think about your own loss, the things you missed about him, the quirky thing that so-and-so did, or, oh, I hate it when they said that, right? And then you're like, oh, I wish I could hear him say that again, right? In the midst of their mourning and in their loss, in the midst of their grieving, Holy Spirit comes. Like, it blew my mind. Like, 
I never saw that, the human part of them. But obviously it would make complete sense why Jesus is like, I got to go so Holy Spirit can come. And it says that he filled them with his deutimous power. And that's the power that changes, right? Super, Kent Clark into Superman, right? That's that power, that deutimous power that comes from him. And so in their lowest, most lost place, most confused place, Holy Spirit comes in. Blew my mind. Blew my mind. I can never read that scripture the same anymore. I hope you don't either. <laughs> Right? So when you feel like, because, right, we may have experienced loss, right, already. Or, you know, we may experience loss in the months, years to come. Remember that. Just remember that. So, how has the Holy Spirit helped you in your grieving? That is a question up for this panel. How has Holy Spirit helped you? I know some of you guys shared a little bit. Um, but if you think about it, when those waves come, What's just maybe one way that you felt like he's helped you? Anybody? Who has something first? Rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> Good, I won. <laughs> uh, learning, the, um, learning the different techniques of freedom mm -hmm. and inviting the Holy Spirit to like whatever situation I'm going through has been so beneficial for me. Um, I would say the loss of my grandfather was probably the most paramount person in my life who I've lost. I've, I've lost friends through all kinds of craziness. I've lost relatives, but somebody like who I just deeply had a, just a, a bond with and a love for was my grandfather. And um, I was telling somebody earlier, it's interesting that even through freedom, when we go to our safe place, oftentimes the Lord brings me with my grandfather. And so I get to, I get, I still get to experience him like on a very regular basis where we're driving in his Lincoln town car together, drinking <laughs> diet Cokes, um, you know, listening to Frank Sinatra. Like, like that's like, I get to, to this day, like routinely get to experience my grandfather and it helps me with not being able to physically still have him here. Yeah, I can agree with um, Pastor Mike. <clears throat> Definitely freedom. Everything that we have learned about freedom um, has been something that has helped me. Um, it takes me back to, and I don't have time to say the whole story, but even during the time, because after my mom had her stroke and there was no heartbeat, they were able to get a heartbeat. But at that point, um, my mom was brain dead. And so she was on life support. Um, she was basically, they were basically waiting for the family to say, pull the plug, right? Like there's just nothing there. Um, and so I get on a plane, um, head over to Washington. Um, my family's a hot mess. Um, and I already knew on my way over there, I had been praying. And I, and I literally, I asked Jesus this question. I said, God, like, where's my mom? Where is she? Because in the moment when she had her stroke, God said, no, she's still here. But on my way over there, <clears throat> I felt like I felt something inside of me that said, like, it, it, you're not going to see her anymore. And so when I asked God that question, I said, Jesus, where's my mom? And he showed me a picture and he showed me he was I could see her in the hospital room. She was on the bed on life support. But then I saw Jesus in the room, and he was carrying her. And he said, and he told me, she's here. But here meant he's showing me she's in my arms. So in, in that moment, I knew my mom, her physical body is here, but she's, in, she's with Jesus. She's in his arms now. And I couldn't, I couldn't say anything. I think I was, again, so numb, so just in shock of everything that was happening, I just said, okay. And I get to Washington, and, and I literally said, Holy Spirit, I really need you to comfort me right now and to be with me because I'm going to walk into probably craziness right now. My family is a hot mess, and they're probably going to be looking at me to be like, what do we do? And, um, and all I remember is this song that carried me through 
this whole process. Um, it was the song Peace Be Still by Lauren Daigle. Um, I don't know if you guys have heard it, but I would literally listen to this. This was like, like literally Holy Spirit comforting me during this time. And the words, just when I started hearing it, it just said, I don't want to be afraid every time I face the waves. I don't want to be afraid. I don't want to fear the storm because I hear the roar. And then the words started coming, peace be still, say the word and I will, set my feet upon the sea till I'm dancing in the deep. Every single time that I had time to go to my room, I would put this song on and I would just cry and cry and cry. And I would tell Jesus, yes, peace peace in here, peace here, just peace all over me. And I could literally feel Holy Spirit comforting me through this song. And every time I listen to it, it's not easy to hear this song because, again, those memories come back. But when the moment came to make a decision, it had been two weeks, and I already knew, and my family just couldn't accept it. And I knew, and God had already showed me that picture. And they asked, they said, we need to make a decision now. It's been two weeks. There's nothing here. And I remember during that time we were shut down, COVID. It was like we were literally starting COVID when all of this happened. And all I remember saying is praying is, Jesus, you need to make a way for us to go see my mom. You have to. You have to because my family is in denial. They do not believe that my mom is not here anymore. How you need to make a way. And I remember calling the hospital, and I, and I said, this is, you know, I'm, I'm her daughter. You need to allow us to go inside because my family cannot make a decision without my dad physically seeing mom, and she's gone. And they had not let anyone in the hospital. Nobody could come in. And somehow God made a way, and the doctor called us back and said, two people can come. And I remember... I, in my mind, I said, it's going to be my sister. She's going crazy. She's going to want to go see my mom. And my sister looks at me, and she said, you need to go. You need to go. So my dad and I were able to go in and see my mom. And um, and literally, I we when we were there and when we came back, we spent that time with my mom. Those were the last moments that we spent with her. But feeling like the weight of everybody looking at you as like, what do we do? It weighs heavy on you because my dad couldn't make a choice. My sister was a hot mess. My brother's an alcoholic, drug addiction. He couldn't. He said, no, if you kill her, th these were her words, if you kill her, I will never forgive you. And so everybody looking at me, what do we do? And I remember looking at my dad and I said, please, Jesus, help me right now because what I'm about to say I'm, my brother's going to come and slice my throat probably after I make this choice. And I looked at my dad and I told my dad, Dad, like, Mom's not here anymore. And I, sh and I was able to share with my dad what God had shown me. And I was going on a limb here, right, because this is a huge decision. And the choice was made that mom, we had to let Mom go. Um, but that was the heaviest weight that I had to carry because... I had to keep it together, literally, while I was in Washington. So I was grieving my mom, but I couldn't mourn my mom because my family, they just, they had fallen apart. And so it wasn't until I came back to Fresno that I was actually able to mourn my mom, mourn her, um, and be able to just cry, throw myself on the floor, uh, look at pictures, look at videos, and just really talk about my mom, I would open my mouth and I would look at John, I'd be washing dishes and I would be reminded of her and I would look at him and I would say, I miss my mom. Everything that I did reminded me of my mom. And so, but I could definitely say like Holy Spirit was so real during that time in my life like I have never felt before. Thank you for making us all cry. <laughs> And I think, if anything you notice, I hope you know this about us at Adventure, is when we call you family, like you're family, and um, when we go through hard things, we go through it together. So you see us all up here and we're weeping because this is family. This is family. And I remember those moments of reaching out to Elsa and be like, hey, 
I love you. We can't bring her back. But I love you. I'm praying for you. Whatever that means, right? Right? And so it's that, like, when... Even the just the acknowledging, you have to acknowledge it. And even as you walk along other people that are acknowledging their own grief, it's just even the symbol of, I love you. Love you. Thinking about you. Why? Because we're in this together. You're not alone. And the enemy of our soul would love to tell you you are alone. But we have Holy Spirit. But we also have brothers and sisters in the faith. Um, and so, yeah, so it's even as you share, it's so fresh for you. I feel like it's so fresh for us too, right? Cause we're like, yeah, we were there. I remember that. <laughs> remember those calls. Um, anybody else wants to go next? <laughs> um, I was telling my wife, um, after lunch, I was like, this is going to be a first for me. It is the hardest thing to be, um, what did you say? An attendant yeah. in Kairos. And then have to come up here and actually be like a speaker. <laughs> That's like, ah, this is a hot, I'm a hot mess right now, okay? <laughs> be funny, uh, not right now, okay? <laughs> um, it's funny that you, you talked about Dr. Tony Evans because I was listening to him this week. And he referenced a passage of scripture and it's found in Habakkuk 3. Uh, verses 17 through um, 19. And it says, though the fig trees does not bud and there are no grapes on the vines, though the olive crop fails and the fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pan and no cattle in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God, my savior. The sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to tread on the heights. And then it goes off and it says, for the director of music on my uh, stringed instruments, uh, sponsored by Apple. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, it's interesting that when we go through laws, uh, we do feel alone. But also, um, we have no uh, energy and nothing to give. And it's fascinating that God would have us go through moments like that um, to show us that uh, we don't get our strength from our feelings, but we get our strength uh, from him. Uh, because the tendency is, right, is that uh, when we go through loss, is that we must, we feel the, 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 the inclination, you know, watch our inclination, um, to... Uh, <laughs> Fancy, I don't know. My wife's sitting next to me, Pastor Mike's on the other side. It's happening. There's something going on. <laughs> you may want to stand up here after we're done. Amen. It's, it's to withhold. And so you withhold from God. When the correct response is to actually go to him. And what I have learned that has helped me has been praise. Scripture said, and I will. P Pastor Tony Evans says that your feelings are the caboose and your will is the engine. He says when your feelings are in the engine and your will is the caboose, <laughs> that's when you fail. And there's nothing better than have these Kairos moments than to have God just cut you all up and then the band come out, let's praise. <laughs> because that's where I have found my strength. Because every Sunday, every first Wednesday, every moment when I'm in my car and I feel like I can't give no more, because Pastor John loves the umph. You know what I mean? When you're at church, I, you feel like, if you, if you feel a sense of umph, you're like, okay, it was a great service. <laughs> but there's sometimes you leave Sunday and you're like, I didn't get no umph. 
And God is saying, it's not in the ump. It's found in me. And that's what praise does. It, it realigns ourselves and refocuses our focus on him. Because sometimes the mountain, he doesn't remove. But he does say that he'll put your feet and make them sure-footed like deer. And so you may find yourself feeling lost with no ump. And you're expecting for God to move the mountain. But maybe the moment for you that God wants to do in you today is not to remove it, but to strengthen your feet to show you that you can endure it. And so... You want to follow that mic? <laughs> I'll do the altar call. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead and bow your heads. No, I'm just <laughs> uh, No, I was just reminded, and, and I just want to make sure that we go back to it. And it's what you had mentioned that with, at the beginning of this when we talked about um, loss and, and grief and mourning. It, it also could be situational. So I'm just remember, I'm just reiterating what was already said earlier. Um, it could be uh, a career path. Um, it could be a marriage. Um, it could be, you know, fill in the blank. I mean, just however you're wired, if, if it's a loss. Like, you know, you thought your life was going to go this way, and then it actually ended up going this way. And so it's important that you acknowledge that. Um, and you go through that process with the Lord. Um, and you go through that process also with other believers who can help maybe um, show you when your caboose is all out of whack. And what, what really needs to be in the front is, is being led by the Spirit. I know that's good. I was, one of the things that I, I wanted to briefly share about is, um, so I just, one of the questions I had are, was what scriptures have kept you sane or allowed you to persevere in your grieving and in your mourning? And um, when I think about this, I think of... Um, some of the loss that I've experienced in my life when it comes to loved ones and people that I, I care about. Um, and I remember one day, um, and this is, we hadn't even lost, any, well, we kind of, so I hadn't really lost anyone super close to me, but um, Deshaun's grandparents had both passed away. And and I remember we were driving, I forgot where we were driving to, we were driving somewhere and it was like a long trip and I'm sitting there and all of a sudden, I don't know why, but I was just thinking about our life and I was thinking about our kids and I was thinking, about all this stuff, and I just felt the need to, to tell Deshaun, and then, and so <laughs> I just le le look over at him, and I said, hey, um, I said, you know that scripture that talks about, like, in, in, in the faith chapter in Hebrews, and it talks about all these people, it talks about there being a cloud of witnesses, and as you're running your, it says, run your race with perseverance, and there's a cloud of witnesses, cheering you on and in that moment like I felt like I couldn't even get the words out because I was like I think of your grandpa I said grandpa Wilbur Caraway first generation pastor and I think of the legacy that he left and he's up there cheering on at that time his dad I said and your dad and he's a deacon and and he's gone to be with Jesus now but he's joined the cloud of witnesses. So then I think of you and you fulfilling the call that God has in your life. And he's up there cheering you on. I said, I think of him and both of them cheering on our son. And just a legacy. And this is cloud of witnesses cheering you on as you continue to fight, as you continue to persevere, as you continue to be all that God calls you to be. Like, you are not running this race alone. And there are people here on earth that are running it alongside of you in the physical. But I know that there is a crowd of witnesses up there cheering you on. And as they see you and as they see you striving and as they see you grinding and as they see you walking it out, they're saying, come on, let's go. Keep it up. Just around that corner. And they're not the crazy coaches. Like, get out there. Like, they're not that. Don't worry. <laughs> 
but they're alongside Jesus, cheering us on in this life. I think the times where I, I find a lot of my clients get stuck when it comes to grieving and loss is that they forget that you can still honor them by what you do here. And so you have to redeem that because the enemy will tell you you can't. It's too late. You, they, can't, they can't tell you they're proud of you. It's too, no, no, it's not. What am I doing today that can honor them? What am I doing today that can honor them? I just briefly wanted to share that. And I don't know, if you guys want to share anything else? Yeah, as you're saying that, <clears throat> there's just some things that I realized. Because um, the loss of my mom has, I could probably say, has been the biggest loss I've had in my life so far. Um, it's super fresh for me still. It's going to be three years in, um, in May. So it's still pretty fresh for me. Um, but some of the things that I've <clears throat> realized is um, thinking about my mom and being able to continue living life without my mom here um, is just that Jesus is my life. Um, my, my mom was not my life. My mom gave birth to me. She was a huge part of my life, right? But my mom wasn't my life. And so it, it just goes back to where who your source is, right? Who are you connected to? I loved my mom. My mom and I were close. We fought all the time, but we loved each other. And um, I could call her, and she would call me. She could hear me talk for hours. I couldn't hear her talk for hours, but she could hear me talk for hours. But just, and these are funny things, right, that I, that I, that I say now because she, she wasn't my life. And so I think even knowing like, Jesus, you are my life. Like you gave me life. So you're going to have to give me all the strength I need to be able to move on every single day, knowing that my mom is not here physically with me. Um, and just knowing you stole my verse. Um, but that's just right. God, it, it was the cloud of witnesses. That was another verse for me that keeps me going. And, um, and it's amazing how God reminds you of these things because just what, two weeks ago, I, I was speaking, I spoke here on a Monday night to the women, not realizing I had said yes to speaking that night. And that, that day was my mom's birthday. My mom would have been 69. And I didn't realize it until I actually, Jesus literally showed me on a Saturday morning prayer, look at your phone. And I looked at my phone. And when I saw the date, I was like, I can't speak on that day. My mom's birthday. I'm going to be miserable. I'm going to be curled up in bed crying, looking at my mom's picture and feeling sorry for myself, you know, all these things. And it was literally God telling me, no, no, this is like, this is a way that you're going to honor your mom is by speaking on that night to honor her because my mom's last words to me, Mother's Day, my mom passed away the day after Mother's Day. Her last words to me that night when I called her, she said, Mija, every time I would talk to her, never take your eyes off Jesus. No matter what happens, you keep your eyes on Jesus. You keep moving forward. There's nothing more beautiful than... To, than in this life than, than serving Jesus. And, and those words ring loud in my mind, in my mind, in my ears every single day. And she, she's right, a hundred percent right. And so knowing that I, 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 God told me you're going to speak on spiritual mothers, spiritual godmothers. And that's exactly what I did. And I'm sitting up here in worship and God sends this crazy woman over here to come and mess me up right before I go up on stage. And she literally comes and hugs me and she says, I just feel like I need to hug you right now. And I, and that, and I need to tell you that your mom is looking up from, from the, she didn't even know it was my mom's birthday, looking from, down from heaven as one of the cloud of witnesses cheering you on right now, telling you, Miha, you can do this. I am cheering you on. And I'm a hot mess. And I'm a hot mess. <laughs> and I started shaking and crying because she did not, she didn't even know. She didn't even know what I was going to speak on. She did not know it was my mom's birthday. And I looked at her and I said, I hate you right now. It's my mom's birthday. This is what I'm speaking on. And she, we just cried. She just held me and we cried and we cried and we cried. How, I, I can't, it, how much more real can God be? 
how much more real that God is sending. He sends exactly what you need. Does that make sense? Like he sends you people in your life. And, and in the moments that you most need it, he, he sends you words of comfort, words of affirmation, words of encouragement. And that was the, I'll never forget that day. I'll never forget that day. And one more verse and I'll, and I'll shut up. <laughs> Another verse that keeps me going is Psalms 4.8. And it's a verse that my mom taught us when we were little in Spanish. Salmos 4.8. En paz me acostaré y así mismo dormiré porque solo tu Jehová me haces vivir confiado. In peace I will lie down and sleep for you alone or God are, are with me. And every single night I remember since we were like four years old, my mom, every single night, we would have to recite that verse. And that's the same verse that I started teaching my children, Melody, Lucas, Sophia, just praying that over them and memorizing it. And I always remember that. But a way that, that we honor, that I honor my mom, is just remembering her words and remembering, like, serving Jesus. Uh, that's a way that, that I could honor my mom and, and sharing, keeping her alive through the memories, talking to my children about grandma. Mami, mami, tina, mami tina this, mami tina that. Oh yeah, mami tina would do this, and just keeping you know her with alive through the memories. It's the memories, and the kids probably don't remember. Melody remembers her probably the most. Sophia very little, but even pictures and her them seeing pictures of my mom holding us when we were little, and my mom holding them when they were little. And so this is like another way that that you know we we just. We keep honoring my mom that way. Um, I'm going to briefly share this, and then we'll go into a time of activation. Is just the power of the Holy Spirit. So it was just really cool because you got to hear how Holy Spirit ministered to her, right, through what he told me to share with her. So you see Holy Spirit use as, not use, Holy Spirit acting as comforter to her, but Holy Spirit doing them his power through me right? So same Holy Spirit, right? Which is crazy because in my mind, I'm thinking like, I'm sitting behind her and I'm like, I'm not going to tell her this. She's going to go up and speak right now. Like, Jesus, you're crazy. This is going to tear her up. It's tearing me up. I'm already bawling right now. I'm like, I cannot tell her this. She's literally going up in less than one song. Like <laughs> there was a song. I'm like, she's going up. I can't tell her. I can't, I cannot do that to her. Like, this is bad like as a speaker I'm like this would wreck you don't tell me that right and he's like tell her now go T tell her and I was like that's what I told her I was like I'm sorry I gotta do this and that's the power and the presence of Holy Spirit when we allow Holy Spirit to use us right as he's freeing us as he cleanses us as we learn to obey him we get to be filled with him to what be a conduit of his power and minister healing. And so that's also the power of the Holy Spirit. So we get to see Holy Spirit as comforter. But we also get to see Holy Spirit, like, give us words of knowledge, give us words of prophecy, gives us, like, just use us in all aspects of him. So it's just super cool. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into a little time of activation. And uh, we're just going to invite Jesus into that grieving. And like Pastor Mike had shared, thank you for sharing that again. This grieving could not necessarily just be the loss of a person. It could also be the loss of a thing um, or something that didn't happen. Did you know that you, you can grieve things that didn't happen? You grieve things that didn't happen or weren't there, right? You grieve the loss of. Pastor Mike shared about the absence of his father. There was grieving there that had to happen. Even though his dad wasn't there, that caused a wound, and therefore there was a missing piece. So you can grieve things that don't even happen, expectations where someone was supposed to come through for you and they didn't. You're grieving. Can you invite Holy Spirit into that? So go ahead and close your eyes. Take a deep breath. So into your nose, out through your mouth. One more, into your nose, out through your mouth. Jesus wants to partner with you in the pain and in the grief. He doesn't want you to carry that alone. And so what I want to do right now is we're just going to picture Jesus. You're there in your safe place. I 
And what we're going to do is we're going to let God know that we're sorry. And if we've grieved and if we've mourned and if we've done this in an unhealthy way, maybe we've soothed ourselves with things other than Holy Spirit. Maybe we weren't believers just yet and we didn't know how to cope with the loss. It's okay. But now that you know him, he wants to help you. So I want you to to go ahead and repeat after me. God, I repent for partnering with unhealthy grieving and mourning. God, I'm sorry for navigating the process apart from you. I repent for assigning any blame onto you that wasn't yours. And today, I choose to welcome you into this part of my heart. Holy Spirit wants to be your comforter. And so what we're going to do is we're going to invite Holy Spirit to be just that. So go ahead and repeat after me. Holy Spirit, I invite you now to fill me. I want to experience you as my comforter. And as Dr. Jimmy Evans shared about the comforter on a blanket, like the one on a bed, Holy Spirit wants to comfort you. He wants to wrap his arms around you. Would you just let him?